I have an advice for my viewer. A sincere one. again. My name is Oluwada Milola Matil and you are watching Arena of Healing TV. In this place, you wake up smiling, you feel no hands and your bondage will be removed. I posted a video at least once in a week to build your confidence for life and also in the ministry. I was discussing with one of my colleagues last week and from our discussion this topic came into my mind. I have an advice for my viewer. A sincere one. Second Timothy. 3 verse 1 says, In the last day, perilous time shall come. And likewise, when you look at Matthew 24, starting from verse 6, In the last day, perilous time will come. Nation will rise against nation. There will be war. There will be pertinences, Femi in all over the world. An example of this, it is what is happening in Russia, of earthquake, in different nations. There is no more job, even people that have job. They are ready to do any kind of evil, even just to keep their daily breaths. People are moving from one nation to another, just to have their daily bread. There is no more husband for the mature lady in the world. Isaiah 4 verse 1 says, In the last day, seven women, they will hold on to one man. There is baby mama all over the world. People they are not requesting, even for spam online. For them to make their own baby, there is an increase of suicide. In 2 Samuel 17 verse 23, we read about an Ahitophel. Because his advice was not being followed, he had his life by suicide. I pray for every of my viewers that every evil advice be raised against you. To stand against your peace, God give Pharaoh signs and wonder for the peace of Israel by taking away everything that give Pharaoh peace. This shall be the portion of anyone that may raise even advice against your progress in life. There is hatred, jealousy all over the world. When we read the book of Esther chapter 6, Haman was being lifted up in the kingdom of King Assyrius. But there is a man in that kingdom. His name is Mordecai. He belonged to the Jew. But this Haman determined to destroy all the Jews just because of the hatred he has towards Mordecai. Because Mordecai decides not to bow down for Haman. I pray for my fewer that you will not bow down for your enemy. God has lifted up some people, but they are not using their position in order to harm others. When the world is full of hatred and jealousy, we run to the house of God in order to find love. But what we are seeing in the church nowadays it is cultural and traditional. People are just following the way that their forefather has laid down for them. They come to the church to pray, dance, pay their tithe and offering, and share the grace. We find it difficult, even in the house of God, to find the standard of genuine love that Jesus has laid down for the church. There is hunger in everywhere. A sample of this is what we read in the book of 2 Kings 6 verse 28 where some women 
They took up of their children and eat them up. Just because of the famine in the land, in the world right now, many parents are selling up their children just for them to find a daily needs. I was discussing with a lady that why are you into this kind of business you are doing? Will your parents be happy that this is the business that you are doing in a strange land? She simply told me that my parents was once applying for the fiscal of Italy for me so that I can be doing prostitute in Italy. But the visa was not be granted. That is what I'm hearing in UAE. Matthew 24 verse 8 says, This is not yet the end, but the beginning of sorrow for the world. What is my advice for every of my fewer? Advice number one, have less children. Psalm 127 verse 4 says, As our it is in the hand of the mighty, so also is our children in our hand. It is good to have much children, but as the world is going on now, for you to have less stress, it is advisable for everyone to have less. My mother also told me that if you have capacity to have four children in life, make sure that you have two so that you can use the remaining resources to take care of your life and your future so that in your future, you will not lock the door of your children for your own daily needs. I stayed in this land for complete one year without having a job. And within the period, I lacked nothing. My husband was able to cope because we have a less responsibility. Advice number two is to find who you are. As the world is going now, there is no doubt that it is the people that follow their dreams that they are going to rule the world. Don't be afraid to take risk. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we are thinking or asking from God according to the power that works in us. What does the Bible mean? By saying you should take a risk, what does the Bible mean by this Bible fast? It means to take a bold faith, a bold step. You have seen an example of people who take a risk in the Bible. Matthew 25 told us about a master who wanted to travel and he called his three servants. He gave them a large sum of a month. He gave one, one talent. Another one, he gave two talents. And another one, he gave him five talents. For the one who had five talents, he went ahead and make a profit of what the talent the master gave to him. For the one who had two talents also, he went out by making a profit with that two talents. When the master came back, master told them, you have been faithful with a little thing I committed into your hand. Go right now into the place of your rest. But the one that received one talent, dig a pit. He placed the one talent inside. He was a foolish servant. What does this mean? It means that though they are using their talents, their gift in the way it has pleased God, they are the wise servants, and it is the promise of God for them to enter into the rest. This is the reason why I say it is those that use their talents that take a bold risk that they are going to rule the world. The lesson that Jesus wants us to learn is that. God wants us to take a risk in life. And the more profits you make toward that talent that he has committed into your hand, the more God is going to commit into your hand. I remember starting this program 
with just five subscribers and a negative comment all around me. It looked like discouraging. It looked like not to move forward. But I thank God today for the wonderful and beautiful thing that God is doing in this journey. I like the size of my God. To determine the size of my goal. So go ahead. Take a big risk. Acting in faith. God is ready. To take that big dream in your hand. That you are making profit with it. To top it for you. It is easy to fear man. It is easy to have the fear of comparison. I was once betrapped into the fear of failure, fear of the future. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Learn not in your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge God. And He will direct your path. Never be wise in your own eyes. Depart from evil. Haman said, I am determined to kill all the Jew. Galatians 6 verse 7 answer Haman. Which says, I bear the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble us. When you look at Psalm 105 verse 12, it says, When these people they are few, when they are stranger in that land, when we move from one nation to nation, from kingdom to another people, he reproved the king for our sake. He suffered no man to do us evil and do my prophet no harm. The beautiful things about fearing God is that the day you begin to fear God, you fear nothing again in this life. But to those who don't fear God, everything around them, it puts them in the trap of fear. I could remember the lady. I was sitting and having a discussion with her. Immediately her phone rang. She was so scary. I asked her, why someone called you? And there is a fear all over you. When you have the fear of God, the beautiful thing is that you enjoy the peace of God. Isaiah 26 says, We are going to draw water with peace from the well of the salvation. Jesus told us, My peace I have given to you. Not as the word I have been given, I have been giving you. When you have the fear of God, you have the peace of God flowing in your heart. Even when the whole world wants to collapse, you know that you are in the right stand with God. And you fear nothing. You fear no earthquake. The hunger, even though the thousands of people in the world, they may not have the partner. You are so sure that a good partner we can never elude you. Those who fear God, they live their life according to the glory of God. To fear God means you bow for His name, you reference Him, you surrender totally to His will and to His commandment. You worship the One who created the heaven and the earth, include everything that is there. Our God is a good God. We is filled with love and concern about us. For this reason, we trust and believe in his promise concerning our life. We believe that when we have faith, when we follow him and follow his commandment, he's going to bless us and we are not going to destroy with the world. And that is the reason he says, you come unto me, you that are weary and be troubled. I am going to give you rest. Learn from me. Humble your heart. And I am going to give you rest. For my yoke it is easy for you to bear. What are the lessons that we need to learn from today's topic? Number one is to have less children. For us to have less stress. 
Number two, follow your dream. Take a step, rise in the faith, and use the talent that God has given to you. Number three, fear God. In every of your decision, every of your way, acknowledge Him. Have you subscribed to my channel? If you have not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. God bless you and have a wonderful day.